Good morning. Welcome to worship service this morning. We want to welcome everyone here and all of you people who are joining us on multiple platforms this morning. We're going to begin as usual. We have a video. I'll ask you to stand and join with me as we give thanks for baptism. We begin this morning as usual in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower, shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for our opening hymn. Psalm 118 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for the house of the Lord, from the house of the Lord, we bless you. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will Say this is the day that the Lord has 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. We'll read the psalm responsibly, 146. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have God of Jacob on their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The reading this morning is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 19. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, it is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all these, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who is his testimony before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be not haughty, or to be set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so they, that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel this day is a reading from the book of St. Luke in the 16th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus continues in these words. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they might not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I want to start with this example this morning because the person who sent it to me, the colleague who sent it, does happen to be of Norwegian extraction. And he thought I'd find it interesting. He said, two of my parishioners went a while ago over to Norway. And they were traveling through the countryside. And they were sending me postcards. And one of the postcards read this. Pastor, we passed through hell today. <laughs> and we're concerned. There seems to be an awful lot of Lutherans in hell. Oh, <laughs> now, I mention that because it's directly related to this. We have a person in heaven and another one in hell. And that's where we are. And you'll notice it's completely switched. The man who had everything, the man who had goods and riches and clothes and all that you could ask for. My vision is something between 10 and 20,000 square feet for a house, four cars in the garage kind of thing. This man who had all this, he's done. And here's where he winds up in hell. Because you see, what he has done is what a lot of us are good at. We're good at denial. I can see it happen every day, by the way. I'll come back to that in a moment. In the meantime, the guy who he's denying, the man at his gate, who's right out the front door, Lazarus, he's died, he's gone, and he's in heaven with Abraham and the rest of the crew. And he goes, I want help. And they go, uh-uh, sorry. You missed it. You had more than enough chances, and you just walked right on by. Uh, by the way, you'll note that small medical notation in here about the dogs licking Lazarus's sores. That's actually good for Lazarus while well, he's still here, because it's helping to clean out some of the infection. But that's a tough way to go at it, and a hard way to live. 
Now, the reason I said we're good at denial is this. I saw it this morning. I participated in it this morning, I'll be honest. I came through my residential neighborhood to get to the Yellowhead. And lo and behold, who's standing there? One of the street people walking up and down and up and down with the sign. Now, the first thing I denied was I didn't read the sign. And the second thing I denied was the fact that I noticed that he had a really good-looking mountain bike right beside him. But I denied his existence, drove right on by him. That's denial. Because these people are always with us. That's Mark 14, by the way. If you want to take a look, it's also in Matthew. About the poor are always there. There are always people begging, always people looking. And here is what Jesus is saying to us. What you do will have impacts. What you do will have confident consequences. What you do, I'm watching. And on the other hand, then we have people like this who do the following. Friend of mine, number of years ago, had to drive the best part of 45 minutes from her place into the nearest city to go to university. She was doing night classes and upgrading and getting her next degree. Problem was, she lived out in the country, and I mean out in the country. Dark. Now, the thing that you need to know about this is that she had one place where she really had to watch. She had what I call a Saskatchewan corner. Now, a Saskatchewan corner is where I pave a grid, and then there's another one, and I pave that one, and they're 90 degrees, and I never tell you, and I don't warn you, and I don't tell you to slow down. It's just there, and you better know it's there, or you're going to be in the ditch. What was troubling her was this. Every time she went through that corner, which she had to go through to get to her place, there's a man standing there, just standing there, and it's creeping her out. And she says, you know, I always slow down because he's always there. And the woman said sweetly to him this, do you know that that man does that every night you have classes? Do you know that man is there every night for you? She went, excuse me? She said, every night he's on that corner so you don't miss that corner. He's worried about you. He's your neighbor that lives four kilometers over and another half kilometer down. And every night you have class, he's out there. He doesn't have to be, but he's out there in good weather and bad weather and any weather. He's standing there with his high-vis jacket on so that you don't miss the corner. Now, nobody's asked him to do it. Nobody's told him to do it. Nobody's paying him to do it. But it's noticed. Now, says Jesus, there's two kinds of service. Do you notice the people who are there who need help or not? How many people do we walk by? How many people do we deny in a given day, let alone a, living, a given week, dear friend? And the question is this. Jesus asks, are you going to walk by or are you going to stop? I got stopped by a man, several actually in my time. I've been stopped and I always find their stories really interesting. But that's for another day. And maybe a coffee, depending on where we are. Which one are we going to be, dear friend? Amen.
Stand and join with me as we come to our hymns of the day.
confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. O oh God, rich in mercy, fill your church with righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Empower the baptized by your spirit to be rich in good works and ready to share. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Protect the earth and its creatures provide water, food, shelter, and favorable inhabitants, especially for endangered species. We ask, O oh Lord, as climate change is still with us, that you would be with our brothers and sisters in Atlantic Canada, from New Brunswick all the way across to Newfoundland. Send help, send aid, so that in the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona, they may know that they are cared for and that we are praying for them. God of grace. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Increase justice in nations, local governments, and courtrooms. Guide lawyers and those who hold public office to act with compassion and discernment. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Give food to the hungry. Set the captives free. Lift up those who are bowed down. Watch over the stranger. Tend to those who are ill, especially those that we name from our hearts and these people. Sandy, Howie, Sharon, Tammy and Tiffany, Henry and Violet, Eric, Kim, Rose, Doug and Phil, Ken, Kelsey, Chris and Riley, Diane and Daniel, Sarah, Wesley, Leslie, Bernice and Pear, Jason and Nick. Extend your renewing and restoring hand, Lord, so that they are strengthened to be your servants in whatever way you would have, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Enliven our praise. Inspire musicians, artists, poets, and all who create beauty in this place, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Enfold the saints who have died in the arms of your loving care. Grant that the holy angels accompany us and bring us to eternal life with them in the light of your presence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God. We offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace.
Uh, we're getting there. At least I have the guys in this section trained. See, they're still standing. Because they know I'm going to ask you guys to rise and join with me again. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending. in what she was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and then again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all of them to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins do this for the remembrance of me Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated for the distribution.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your faith this day and forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 And now receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We have birthdays this week, and this is only till the end of September. Uh, Simon Arndt, Ryan Bukaboom, Liam Thompson, Curtis Ulmer, and some person whose initials are Nancy Unsworth. <laughs> I think that name's familiar. Anyway, they all have birthdays this week, so we need to sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Now, anniversaries, there are two to remember. Um, Karen offers her deep apologies. This was missed last week. Um, Scott and Rebecca Thompson had their 12th anniversary on September the 18th last week. And then Ruth and Ron Banky have an anniversary on the 1st of October. It's their 39th. Oh, wow. So we need to sing happy anniversary to them too. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Some other dates to bring before you. October, boy, have we got it going on. Yes. Next Sunday, we make two shifts at the same time. The first is this. No more of these. We go to bread and wine. Okay? Uh, see, I knew that would make some of you guys happy. For sure. And yes, I'll do as I was instructed. Big pieces of bread. I was warned when I got here. Anyway, okay. We're also going to have uh, children's time starting next Sunday, and it will be early in the service. And I'm giving you a spoiler alert. Because we are all the children of God... Everybody's going to get to participate as best as you are able. So it doesn't matter whether you're 9, 29, or 99. I expect you to help out. Okay? Because I got the first one. Anyway, Cowboy Sunday on the 23rd, Fall Supper and Silent Auction on the 29th. Lawrence, you want to say a word here? I forgot to put the uh, uh, dates on my sheet that's on the doors and stuff outside, and I had complaints. It was me. Uh, but uh, also uh, uh, that we have now decided that kids 12 and under will be free, so they can come to that supper for free. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. I have one more, and that's uh, that we're holding three... Uh, Sessions of Adult Confirmation, 20th, 27th of October, and the 3rd of November. And even if you're confirmed and you got a whole bunch of questions or you've forgotten everything you knew about what does this mean, um, come along. Join in. So, okay. Uh, uh, Pastor, can I interrupt you there and just ask you, how long are the classes? Um, well, there's three of them. Oh, no, each of the other class. How long are they? Yeah. Well, I've prepared an hour 
And then it depends on how extensive you want to have the okay. discussion that usually happens after. And they're here. Excellent. Okay. And they're in person. 27th, 3rd of uh, November. Uh-huh. Somebody's writing dates down. Okay. Now, uh, Nancy? Yes, I have a, just a couple. Uh, one is we have a whiteboard in the entryway, and that is something a little bit new. Um, and what we're hoping is that if, you, if it's just sort of slipped your mind to read the newsletter or you read the newsletter, but you have some timers and just can't remember what it was on there and when what's happening this week or this month, it's on the board there, take a look. Um, and that's sort of a nice reminder like, oh yeah, I need fall supper tickets or that kind of thing. Um, also, um, the other thing that I have is that every uh, month, the last Wednesday night of the month, we uh, ladies will get together at a coffee shop. Um, it's a good excuse to have a latte. Not that we really need an excuse, but, but if we need an excuse or a reason now, it's for Jesus. Um, and so come out, enjoy a latte, get to know some people from your church, which is really nice because, and it isn't a huge time commitment. Come, starts at seven and ends when I guess your latte is finished. Um, so uh, that will happen last Wednesday of the month. The address is on the whiteboard at the, uh, when you come in there. And then as far as, um, I just wanted to mention that we do have a band coming for the fall supper and um, so I'm really excited about that. And then we have our cowboy church. We're going to feel free to dress up and, um, and we're having a lunch afterwards. So if there's some people that you're like, you know, I'd like to invite them to church so that they sort of know what I'm doing on a Sunday morning, but it's not like, uh, you know, come to church. Come for some chili, invite them. There'll be plenty of food. So, and then there's no cost as well. That's it. You're done? Okay. okay. Anybody else? Stand and join with me for our closing hymn, please. God sent to son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives.
serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Be 